Good evening. I'd like to call the, to order the meeting of Monday, September 13th. If you would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If the clerk would please take the roll. <coughs> Council Member Ashford. Present. Council Member Lamb. Here. Council Member Mosrak. Here. Council Member Pemberton. Here. Council Member Ruiz. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Here. Council has before them the minutes of the regular meeting of August 9th. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? So move. Madam Chair. Support. Thank you. Council Member Ashford. And Councilmember Mosherak. We have two presentations tonight. The clerk would read the first presentation. A proclamation designating September 2021 as National Recovery Month will be presented to representatives of the Blue Water Recovery and Outreach Center. If I could have a member of the BW Rock join me at the podium, please. I would like to present to you this proclamation, whereas behavioral health is an essential part of health and one's overall wellness, and whereas prevention of mental and substance use disorders works, treatment is effective, and people recover in our area and around the nation, and whereas preventing and overcoming mental and substance abuse use disorders is essential in achieving healthy lifestyles, both physically and emotionally, and whereas we must encourage one another and all to take part in being the solution for our community, and whereas thousands of people in St. Clair County are affected by substance use disorder, and whereas to help more people achieve and sustain long-term recovery, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, and the Port Huron City Council invite all residents of Port Huron to participate in National Recovery Month, September 2021. Now, therefore, I, Sherry Archibald, by the authority vested in me as the Mayor Pro Tem of the City of Port Huron, and on behalf of Mayor Pauline Rupp and Council Members Ashford, Lamb, Mosrak, Pemberton, and Ruiz, do hereby proclaim September 2021 to be National Recovery Month in the City of Port Huron, and it is with great honor we present this proclamation to the Blue Water Recovery and Outreach Center for the establishment of the region's only recovery community center, which provides the face and voice of recovery and helps the residents of Port Huron restore their life from substance use disorder. On behalf of the local recovery community and on behalf of BW Rock, we are honored to receive this proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. We were also honored to beat the police in softball the other week. <laughs> if the clerk would read presentation number two, please. Beautification Commission members will recognize the 2021 Yard of the Year winners. Hello, I'm Laura Luttrell. I'm the chairman of the Beautification Commission. Today we thank City Council for the opportunity to give recognition to the talented gardeners we are privileged to have in our city. The commission is comprised of a nine member board consisting of dedicate, very dedicated individuals and this year marks the 36th year of the Commission's existence since it was created in 1985. The Beautification Commission's mission is to enhance and maintain the natural beauty of the City of Port Huron and to create and foster citizen pride by developing programs, projects, and annual events. At this time, I would like to introduce the Beautification Commission members. 
Darcy Mackey. Please stand, <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Julia Price. <clears throat> Stephanie Ramales. Life members, Mary Jo Edson. Life members means 10 years of service or more. Kathy Holt. Diane Horn. Donna Kelly. And Carolyn McNeil. The City Council annually appropriates $3,300 to assist the Commission with purchasing flowers and to help with sponsoring the Yard of the Year contest and the Tree Recognition Program. We appreciate these funds. The Commission currently maintains flower beds at approximately 13 locations throughout the city, most with multiple beds at one location. The Beautification Committee also sponsors the Tree Recognition Program whereby individuals can have a tree planted on city property in memory of a loved one or to honor or recognize an individual. <clears throat> the commission members and generous volunteers prepare and plant the flower beds each spring and then provide the ongoing weeding and maintenance of these beds throughout the season. At this time, I'd like to submit a plea to the members or to the audience listening for volunteers. We've had a rough year, many injuries, uh, not which were sustained while gardening. So that confirms that gardening is a safe and healthy COVID free activity. You do not need to be a city resident. You don't need to attend meetings. No experience required. You do not need a master gardener certificate. Uh, you won't even get your hands dirty because the city provides us with gloves. So please grab a friend, grab your family, coworkers, adopt a bed, call the city clerk's office, and while I'm on that subject, thank, thank you so much to the city clerk's office for their ongoing support throughout the year. Um, and let's see, finally, we uh, sponsor the Art of the Year contest, and the Art of the Year award winners, we have your name and number now. We can uh, seek you out for volunteers. Uh, this uh, provides us with the opportunity to showcase the beautiful landscaping of our residents and businesses. I now will ask Stephanie Ramales, chairperson of the Art of the Year contest, to come forward and speak on this year's contest. Thank you, Mayor and Council, to allow us the privilege of um, honoring these people. The object of this contest is to encourage our residents to beautify their property and to make them for you know, just a wonderful place to live. We started the commission 36 years ago. We've been running this 33 years, so it's a long-running activity. Um, properties are judged by master gardeners, and they look for things like uh, different types of plants, whether they're annuals and perennials and their blend, um, whether they keep their yards weeded and nicely trimmed, uh, they, just the, the way that it uh, accentuates the, the uh, house or the building. And these judges are impartial, they're master gardeners, and they are not given any names. This is a blind uh, judging, they are just given addresses they're only allowed to judge from the front of the building. We have divided the city into three different districts <laughs> to help with the judging. The first is the North District, which the limit is to the Blue Water Bridge 94 and the Northern City limits. The Central District is the Blue Water Bridge south to Griswold. And then our South District is Griswold Street to the Southern City limits. It might be interesting to note that we've had three, 637 awards presented since we started this. That includes today's uh, winners. We've recognized 394 different residential groups and 243 commercial businesses since we have started. This year we had 40 nominations. The winners, if they're the first time winners, they receive a coveted wooden yellow tulip that they can put in front of their uh, house. If they are a return winner, they get a leaf with the date to add to their flowers. Um, 
we would like to announce the winners, and hopefully they're here. When they hear their name, they can come up and they can grab their tulip or leaf, whichever it is. Okay. So up on the behind you, we have Central. That's where we're going to start. Yeah. Okay. 1912 Union Street. This is Michael and Melanie Bellman. They'd like to come up. Then we have 1331 20th Street. This is Tracy Cole. She also is a tulip. Remember, each time that these tulips are for the original or first time winners, this year we had seven out of our nine. So that was kind of amazing. Uh, we have Mark Reynolds. He has a leaf. He's a returning winner at 1533 Court Street. I have seen his tulip. He keeps his tulip out. So will you show up to me? No. All right. He gets that. As I said, he always has his tool about. <laughs> then on the north end, we have Paul and Luann Carpo, 2929 Omar Street. <laughs> if you haven't gone by this one, you should. It's beautiful. Uh, we have Robert and Sandra Funk at 848 Lakeview Avenue. I see you. A former student's parent. <laughs> Didn't know. Uh, 2937 Elmwood Street. This would be Donna Slingerland. Sandra. On the south end, our winners at 2830 Military Street, Scott and Karen Hill. <laughs> then at 2223 two, Griswold Street, Stephen and Catherine Gretton. They have a tulip also. <laughs> and then at 1726 7th Street, we have Kim Rogan. And then finally, uh, Jewett Funeral Home was our commercial winner. Uh, they have won many, many times, and the committee is beginning to think that we should put it in perpetuate, perpetuity. I shouldn't use words I can't say. <laughs> because they do such a nice job. Is uh, somebody from Jewett here? No? All right. Well, those are our awards. Um, as was stated by our chairperson, if you are interested, it doesn't take a lot of experience. With, if you don't know a weed from a tulip, we will show you. You don't have to get your hands dirty, as she said. And it is a lot of fun. So um, please contact the clerk's office if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to public hearings. If the clerk would read the first public hearing. To hear comments on the Consolidated Annual Performance Evaluation Report for the 2020 program year. 
Now is the time for anyone in the audience who wishes to address the council concerning public hearing number one to please come forward, give your name and address for the record. Hi, this is for everything, right? Just for, oh. This is on public That's hearing next. number one. Yeah. That's next. Not public comment. Not public comment. Not, okay, I'll go back. That's next. <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone who wishes to address the council on public hearing number one? Seeing no one, I declare public hearing closed. We will now move on to public comment. <laughs> if anyone in the audience wishes to address the council on anything on tonight's agenda or under the city's jurisdiction, now is the time to do so. Again, we ask that you please state your name and number or address for the record, and you have four minutes. I'm too old to be going back and forth with that, you guys. <laughs> uh, my name is Mike Bodice. Uh, my address is 3995 Capitol Avenue, Fort Gratiot, Michigan. And uh, I'm the president of the Fort Henry Area Landlord Association. I was told to make sure to be diplomatic, and James knows I'm kind of difficult with that ton sometimes. But um, I'm just here really, not nothing controversial. Um, it's kind of blindsided a little bit over, uh, over the past three or four days. Fortunately, Ken Harris let me know that there's going to be some major changes in the rental um, uh, definition, I guess, of what's going on with the rental thing, which I read through a lot of it. I met with David okay, for half an hour, 45 minutes, and there's not a lot of major stuff, okay, that, that I could see through the weekend. Bill Johnson and I were kind of over together. Um, there are a few issues. I guess what I'd really like, uh, I wish it would have been some more communication. Again, we've got this communication problem. I don't know why it's happened. Um, it's never been this bad over the last uh, about 47 years I've been a landlord here. Um, uh, usually something this big, we would, the, the city council, um, planning director, myself, and other members that would, would sit down and just go over the things. You guys had the final say and everything, but at least you discussed with us, let us know what you're planning, what you're doing. It does affect thousands of tenants, okay? It affects over a thousand landlords, okay? Um, and like I said, there's not a lot of major things in there that's really, you know, gonna bother me at all, but it would be nice if before this thing is finalized, if we could just sit down as a group, you know, get a, and just go over some of the issues, mainly for both both of us, for us, for David, it, what we talked about is, you know, I'm gonna get hundreds of emails, okay, and phone calls, what the hell's going on here, what's going on here, you guys are gonna get the same, and it'd be nice if we could just kinda get the word out first, okay, to everybody, of what exactly what is going on, okay, does that make any sense, okay, and it just never happened, so I guess it's gonna happen, we understand that, that's not a big deal, but it'd be nice if we could sit down and kind of go over the major topics that maybe we'd like to talk about and you can explain more about what's going on uh, before you, you pass this. Uh, uh, but I guess whatever, whatever it is, regulations, whatever, whatever is going on, okay? So other, other than that, you know, I'm not up here to complain or, you know, gripe, nothing like that, okay? Just like maybe just sit down and talk a little about it. That makes sense, okay? So I'd appreciate it if, if we could do that. If not, I understand that too, that's your problem. Before we go on, I just want to respond to that quickly, unusually, but I will do this. Um, when we bring forth legislation to the mayor and council, <clears throat> this is the first reading of this ordinance. This is where we make it public. This is where we say, here's the proposed legislation, and that begins the public input phase. Gladly meet with you. We appreciate the Port Huron Landlord Association. You brought a lot of sophistication to the marketplace. We appreciate your efforts. City administration, myself, and my staff are more than willing to meet with you to discuss those items. What I will not do is meet with special interest groups and people before legislation has become public. That for the purpose of transparency and integrity in the process, when discussing proposed legislation, it should be done where all of the public, all of the residents, all the tenants, everyone in the city has the ability to read it and provide public input, not have pre-meetings in a back room before it gets to the public. So we will gladly meet with you. We, we enjoy working with you. Um, but I, I believe that when legislation is made, it, the, 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 this is the initial start of public comment. I look forward to hearing from every single person here, as does, I'm sure, the mayor and council as well. You have Hello, my name is Scott Farquhar. I live at 1039 Water Street in Port Huron. Um, I normally come up here to complain about something, 
And um, I'm finding myself in kind of a strange spot here because I'm here for just the opposite. I'd like to thank Mr. Freed, James, for uh, everything that you've done this summer coming off of COVID, um, keeping the canal clean. Um, as a boater, I am the uh, self-proclaimed Facebook mayor of Black River, which I know I would never want to be mayor of Port Huron because <laughs> making it as a joke is a lot of work. Um, but the canal is meant to keep the Black River clean, not only for boaters. I've done probably three props this year, um, and a lot of other people have, but for the most part, the canal has been at least water flowable, and for most of the summer has been clean. Also, congratulations to City Rec, they did a great job this summer um, with boat night and the festivities and the council and everything for that. The uh, concerts that were down here, um, uh, the marina, anybody that didn't get a chance to go la last weekend to the antique boat show, um, I'll publicly say the city of Port Huron, anyone that does not go down and enjoy that and at least look at it and see it, you're missing the boat. No pun intended, but you're missing the boat. A lot of work goes in and it's beautiful. Um, we're going in the right direction. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I'd love to see Blight work. Uh, you know, they work very hard and they do everything they can. I wish some people would uh, not just pay their tickets and clean up the area, but what can we do? You know, we just got to keep plugging away. But I guess I just wanted to say thank you and uh, keep up the good work. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Emma Cowan. I live on 833 Tunnel Street. Um, I will be commenting on BC 21-203. I, amongst many of my fellow neighbors, objected Lot 1002 Whittier Avenue to be turned into a gas station. I'm very happy to hear you called the first request by the Planning Commission did. Um, I do have an idea as to something beneficial it could be. We have one recreation center for children in this town. It's on the north side of the bridge. Um, at the moment park. I strongly believe that we should turn 2003 Avenue into another children's recreation center where we can run special programs out of for children. Um, I, was, I was a part of several youth programs in Sacramento, California, where I spent the majority of my childhood and teen years. Youth aid programs such as being hired to work for Parks and Recreation Department, where we learned valuable experience to be used in the workforce. A work readiness program teaching children and teens interview skills, how to make a resume, how to fill a dirty team, working together on community projects, etc. I believe that children, especially on my side of the town, would greatly benefit from programs like that. And it would be beneficial for not only the town and definitely children in the future. That's all I have to say. I thought it would be a good idea to pass along to you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Joe Bixler, 2022 Thornhill Street. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, share with you some information that um, our folks in South Park have been talking about for a long time. Recently, uh, a flyer was published uh, publicly with regards to a grocery store in South Park. And yes, we need a grocery store, but this is more than just about a grocery store. Uh, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention the efforts on behalf of the city and South Park uh, by our city manager in the past to bring a grocery store to no avail. Not as a result of anything he did or didn't do. Uh, however, that's still necessary and needed. It is a food desert. I'm here tonight to talk to you about and encourage you to look at South Park in a much broader way. Uh, recently, there was a purchase of a building on the river by the Walker Brothers, which we greatly appreciate. We don't know what that's going to be at this point, but it caused several of us to say, it's time for us to start looking at many of those corridors, but particularly the Connor Street corridor and bring it back to its old self. Um, there's potential for vibrancy down there uh, to the mass. In fact, uh, in a recent article in the Times Herald, somebody mentioned that it could be 
potentially the second downtown of Port Huron. I totally agree with that. But it's going to take time, and it's going to take talent, and it's going to take treasure. Some of us have treasure. Some of us have a lot of, have a lot of time, and some of us have some talent. Uh, we're not here to ask you for money. Uh, we're asking uh, you to sit with us and uh, help us uh, share our ideas and develop those opportunities for that quarter to become a, a second downtown. Um, if you'll bear with me just a second, I want to make sure that I'm covering everything in my notes. In any event, um, we're here to encourage you all to help us, and we want to help you guys too. So uh, we'll look forward to sitting down with the city manager and his staff to talk about where we can go from here. Um, again, it's not just about a grocery store, although we desperately need that. Uh, we're looking at development of all sorts in South in the South Park community. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, may I break decorum to respond? Yes, I'd like to respond to that because I saw the flyer as well. And uh, so I want to give a quick recap. You're going to want to sit down for this one, Ken. It may go five minutes. Um, so here, here's where we are with, I'll take it two steps. One, the grocery store, and then I'll take it with the broader development as a whole. So the grocery store has been a huge issue ever since River District burned down and a huge talking point, things we want to work on. So working with the EDA, when David Haynes, our planning director, was at the DDA as an economic development coordinator, for the last, I've been here now eight years, for eight years now we have met with developer after developer for a possible grocery store. I've met with uh, corporate grocery stores, um, the big names you can think of, those who supply the big names. We've also met with numerous family-owned grocery stores, people who run small grocery stores in other communities or in the region to pitch the idea of either coming near the, Con the Connor Street section um, or um, coming to South Park. And there's a couple honest hurdles that we have to, to have to address. And so we've taken our strategy in a couple aspects. Is one, we looked at our zoning. Is there enough parcels there to build a grocery store, to rehabilitate a building, become a grocery store? It's not the lack of facilities. It's not the lack of zoning. So our zoning strategy is pr pretty good. Um, also, it's technically a food desert technically, because our political jurisdiction ends at 24th Street. If our political jurisdictions were beyond 24th Street, because of Kroger and Save-A-Lot so close on 24th Street, it's not technically a food desert if you move the political boundary. So the political boundary creates this food desert. You can make the same argument for the north side and their distance to the nearest Kroger on Kraft. So the issue becomes is, one is you have to compete with Kroger, you have to compete with Save-A-Lot, which are some tough competitors in the marketplace. The smaller the grocery store footprint you go, the more price point you have to get. So there's the price sensitivity as well. People will run in for a quick you know, meat and milk and bread, but are they really gonna fill their grocery store when there's price sensitivity in the marketplace? These are concerns that developers have brought to us. Uh, my last meeting I had was with a, a relatively large uh, Michigan-based grocery supplier. They have their own stores and they support, support family sub, uh, suppliers, and you can probably guess which one that is, I should say in a public meeting. Uh, they brought a whole host of challenges. I met with one of their developers. You know, the grocery industry as a whole is going through a kind of re-evolution, evo another evolution in, its, in, its, in how the grocery market works. Uh, now you, and this was right before COVID hit. So this was, think of COVID will have added to this. With the deployment of shipped and grocery delivery services, you now have Walmart and Kroger doing their own delivery services. It's very hard to not only compete on price point, but to compete when people can just have a grocery order delivered to their home now. And that's a whole new challenge uh, that's factoring uh, with any potential investment. We have worked on some mitigating circumstances. Uh, no one's a fan of Dollar General. But however, if it's a quick grab, Dollar General did bring in some produce, some bread, and some small meat section there to address those one, one grab things. It's not for a grocery order, but it helps fill it. Um, Amazon Prime has now targeted Port Huron with more marketing on their government assistance program. So if you need toiletries and household items, you can now get 50% off your Prime membership, get those things delivered. That's not an answer, but it helps mitigate some of the challenges. So we've been trying. It's very difficult with those host of challenges. Specifically, it's not really the property. It's not the population. The population is there. 
the, the need is there. However, it's, we are relatively close to, to Kroger and Savelot, and it scares off a lot of developers. Um, the previous grocery store was struggling as well. That's the reason why it wasn't rebuilt. It was struggling as well before it burned down. And so we've been trying. When I bring a developer in, I have met with some community leaders down there uh, to come in and make a pitch for the support of the community. I will draw upon all of you the next time we get a developer who visits the community. It's nice when we can take them to lunch and the room's filled with people saying we need a grocery store to help sell it. We could, we could use your help on those things. So that's where we're at in the grocery store, working hard on it. It is incredibly difficult. Uh, anyone who stands up here and says, I can get you a grocery store in six months will lie. Um, the next challenge is as a whole, the counter street So a month ago, we announced the uh, work to develop what's called Corridor Improvement Authority. Uh, it's very similar to like a DDA, like Downtown Development Authority. It caps the property taxes and all growth in those property taxes gets captured for the sole po uh, focus of redevelopment of infrastructure in that district. Uh, we have mapped out the proposed Corridor Improvement Authority. Uh, we're going to have that in place, hopefully within the next year. Under state statute, it does, recover, uh, it does require a authority board member, which has to be a resident, property owner, business owner. So we hopefully uh, can get some stakeholders to, to join in on those efforts. That will allow us to begin investing in infrastructure. I think Connor Street is a beautiful place. It has a rich history. If you look at the development of Port Huron, those, those industrial facilities created, it really was the original second downtown of Port Huron, oftentimes more vibrant than downtown Port Huron. It can be that again. I think we need some old fashioned street lights like we have in downtown. We need to work on our sidewalks down there, make them more walkable. You have beautiful South Park area and Lincoln Park area right down there, uh, walkable, so you can go to dinner with your family and walk them down to a world class park. The city has made significant investments into infrastructure. Uh, I would say North and South Boulevard were the two worst roads. They were completely reconstructed, including water, sewer, and storms. We have safe drinking water in 2014, and then the North Boulevard was completed in 2015 and 16. So both those roads were completed. We have new sidewalks in there. We've also invested in a brand new $250,000 playground structure. We have to thank the Atchison Foundation for helping fund that, the Community Foundation for helping fund that. So we really want to make sure that park is safe. Our police department has done targeted enforcement in that neighborhood to really help see crime reduction. It's, a, it's one of our safest neighborhoods. South Park and Lincoln Park area is one of the safest areas in the city. I would have no problem walking there at night, walking to Connor Street into that park at night. It's a beautiful garden. Uh, the group that does the guarding there does an amazing job. So there's a lot of potential down there. I really do believe that a corridor improvement authority, that will allow us to begin offering infrastructure and investments and in, in, uh, uh, incentives to developers. Hey, come build here. Come build a business here. Come build a grocery store here. Come build anything here. We'll work on the water, sewer, the storm, the sidewalk, old-fashioned lights, really create that sense of place. So placemaking initiative, working on incentives, that's our broader strategy for the South Park area. We'll hopefully have that up and running in the next couple of years. There is a lot of interest there. The walkers have purchased that building. Um, I have met with them. What they're looking at doing is a multi, multi-million dollar investment. I believe it will be an absolute game changer. Uh, you couple that with the investments. I mean, Connor Street is just a wonderful restaurant with a great place to be. Even to look at City Limits has done a wonderful job. Outdoor courtyard, they're going to bring some food trucks in. Really a wonderful place uh, to visit. We can build on that. We'll have to work together. We're going to have to work together to pitch that area to investors. I'm going to need your help. Uh, David will need your help. We'll begin stakeholder meetings within the next six months because the Corridor Improvement Authority will require a master plan. And government cannot write that master plan. That has to be organic from the community. And so we're going to need you all, part of those stakeholder groups, to be a part of that master plan development if we want it to be effective. Um, if we really want it to be a true master plan, a true organic master plan that has a chance of success, it has to come from within the community. It cannot be prescribed from City Hall. It's just not how it's going to work right. So I look forward to working with all of you. Um, I appreciate you coming tonight. Uh, when David and I met in the Corridor Improvement Authority, when we met with the developers, uh, David and I spent four hours walking that entire neighborhood, you know, kind of vision casting, dreaming about what could be, what could be done with some of these buildings. A lot of history there, a lottery history there. Um, so we're excited about it, but when you all come out here, to show your support like this, it kind of excites David and I to get back to the grind tomorrow morning and get this plan, get these meetings plans. A lot of work, a lot of official public hearings you have to post in the paper because of legal statutes to get this authority going. We'll have to work with our school districts, our county, uh, because we'll collect their capture as well. But I appreciate you all coming out. Uh, you kind of inject the enthusiasm of why this is important. You put a name and face to these projects. When we go down and we talk about how these projects, and we meet with developers and we tell them about the people and lives that they can affect, we can give them the names and faces. And that means a significant amount. So I appreciate it. And we will work hard in the next year to get this going. Good evening, Mayor.
Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. Just just some th thoughts that I had uh, had here looking recently. You know, with the announcement of the census and the showing the numbers for Port Yarner going down, with our smart surrounding communities picked us up, it kind of jarred my attention. And I was at, at a retirement party for a gentleman the other day, and the, the guy that's the head of the Port Yarner Competitive Sports Association wanted to a he asked me about uh, the uh, why isn't there any softball in the Port City Port Yarn anymore? And I said, well, there isn't. And he said, no. If you go walk by Pine Grove, just about any time, there's no, there's no baseball games going on. The 16th fields are being unused and stuff. These people have all gravitated to the Kimball Township site. I think, believe it's on Mayor Road or Yeager Road, way out in Kimball Township. And as the discussion went on, the guy from the Competitive Sports Association said the cost to them in the last two or three years have jumped, jumped excessively. And I don't know whether that's gonna take beer money out of their pockets or what it is, but I think that it's, it's time we looked at bringing these people back. We didn't have a baseball tournament there at all this summer or anything. We had a charity game and things like that, but nothing, not much went on 16th Street, not much went on Pine Grove. And God, you know, when we had the tournaments and the other teams from out of town come in town and they remarked it, what a beautiful place Pine Grove Park is, and it is. So let, let's do something about it and see if we can get, get sports back in, the, in that area. One other thing that this brought up is I, as I walked in my neighborhood and in the adjoining neighborhood over Roseville, it was brought up to me by some of the people over in the Roseville area the other day that approximately three years ago, a person called about a tree that was dead on the north, northwest corner of 18th and Howard Street. And they were told, well, we can't do anything about it because there's 41 people ahead of you. And they accepted that fact, that is a fact. But now it's three years later and the tree's still there and it's still dying, it's dead. So it's just something I thought that we could spread the word and look at. And, and let, me, let me end my conclusion here tonight, you know. I, I'm an old guy, I can look at all the financial pictures and I chased them for years. <laughs> Tetratech always stuck out at me. And I just want to, if everybody know, you know, with, with tonight's appropriation under our payment plan, this will be, that'll make us spend $239,000 this year with Tetra Tech. But I guess the thing that really stood out in the last years, we have spent $2.1 million with Tetra Tech. I know they're a renowned firm and they do a lot of work for the city, but, but over the years, I mean, it's just, it's just phenomenal. So I guess they're probably, their coffers are probably richer than anybody else based on the city of Port Yard. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lexi Evliff, 3415 10th Avenue. Um, I am a part of the Helping Hands Community Garden. We were here last week um, to talk about the gas station. Um, there was a lot of community members in that neighborhood who all came together to get signatures and to talk about it. Um, and I think a lot of people were really excited uh, last week when uh, the planning committee decided to um, shut that down. Um, and to not t turn the family video into a gas station. Uh, there was a lot of people who were really excited that the planning committee came to that conclusion. Um, but then I logged in to see the agenda and it says here that the council may choose not to accept the planning committee's uh, recommendation um, and to choose to schedule your own public hearing. And I just was kind of surprised to see that. Um, and I'm just here to, I guess, urge you to please um, respect and honor um, the planning committee's uh, decision to not have a gas station in this residential neighborhood that's within like 200 feet from my community garden. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Mary Williams and I'm a, I'm a resident here on the south side of Port Huron. First of all, I would like to um, say to uh, uh, the, the board is you guys did such a wonderful job with the Tuskegee Airmen uh, presentation. That was beautiful. And Anita, I'd like to thank you for, um, I believe you spearheaded that and I'd like to thank you for that. That is one of the most beautiful monuments and sites here in Port Huron and we all should be proud of that. Um, one of my, cons my concern here today I, I came in regards to the store, but um, it's been on my mind quite a bit. Um, our homeless population is growing here in Port Huron, 
and it's not only on the south side and midtown, it's even on the north end. And I think that we really should some kind of way be proactive about resolving that issue. And I'm not talking about putting somebody in jail or anything like that. I'm concerned about a plan because winter is coming and our winters are getting worse. And I think that we should be proactive of trying to find out what the plan is for our homeless population here in Port Huron, what their plan is, if they have a plan. Because um, we've I've, almost every uh, winter, there is a person found dead behind the, either the Goodwill or uh, the old Kroger store um, during the winter time. So I just want us to make sure that we're on top of it. Um, I think October is homeless. You know, you, they do the homeless count and everything. Well, the homeless count is good, but what is it going to do if those people are out there? There's a man that had slept on the on 24th Street the whole summer, um, and I'm, I'm sure you guys are aware of it. But he's been out there the whole su whole summer. He's he doesn't bother anybody, but he's out there. There's a whole bunch of people behind the Goodwill. They come out from behind the Goodwill asking for cigarettes from some of our kids who are going to school, so, you know, going to school or to their sports practices. So I would just encourage us to be proactive. I don't know how to do it. It's all over Facebook, but I don't know how to do it, and I don't know if it's safe for one person to do it, you know. So if we can find out some kind of collective means to do it, to help, not hinder or hurt somebody, um, but to help, I would, and I would love to help with it just tell me how i can be of service to our homeless population thank you good evening uh, my name is shannon renard i live at 4236 janice court fort gratiot i'm one of the como owners for mo's corner deli and I'm also uh, one of the founding members of Susan Soul Society. I work closely with many businesses and nonprofits as well. Um, and to piggyback off of what I'm hearing today, we have a beautiful city. We have a board who wants to see us grow. As a business owner, this summer was amazing. Boat night was fantastic. And I love Cynthia getting everybody to come downtown and and not be afraid anymore and actually uh, see what Port Huron's all about. So as someone who's non-native, I love it here. This is my home, 15 years, I'm not going anywhere. And to everybody here, thank you for investing in your community. And I urge you to take care of the people that are here. Tourism is great. Business. Business is great, but we want small businesses. We want resources for the people who are here because my deli will not survive. Our, our kids won't be able to grow up here and stay here. Port Huron will not survive if we don't take care of the people sitting in this room and the people within the city limits. So thank you for beautifying your gardens. Thank you for shopping small. Thank you for wanting, wanting a grocery store in a place where people don't have to go, and, you know, have a car to get to. I respect that, and, and so please think about each other first before worrying about bringing in investors. Look in your borders because you're in a room full of them, and you guys are invested as well. So uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. How do you follow that? So, uh, good evening, Council. I'm Angela Kelly. I live at 1410 11th Street. Um, it's an interesting corner on Chestnut and 11th. We're so close to commercial, residential. Zoning is definitely an issue. Um, as the city manager and as I accosted Sherry as she's handing me a flyer for Boat the Blue, um, I'm up here about the school zone striping. Um, James know I'm a big street person. I love our new street lights. <laughs> um, but we need to work on our streets. I'm not sure how I got lost in the wash. 
sewer separation, streets were tore up too, I get that, but obviously the funding is still there for that, but our streets are a mess. And I did contact a city manager. I try to change knows because I get him on the phone. He's accessible, you guys. <laughs> um, but I try to do chain of command always before I, I go to the top. And obviously, I'm here tonight too. So um, I think we can do better as far as the school zones, the crosswalks. They haven't been striped. Um, engineering department wasn't sure whose responsibility it was. We've got MDOT that comes through here. I saw MDOT just, uh, we were heading out town to go to DTE yesterday. <laughs> And um, there's a crosswalk and it says school in 20th and Griswold, and I believe Oak too. So MDOT gets it. We need safe passages for these kids to get to school. And then just street striping in general. This all came about because I really need a four-way stop at 11th and Griswold. We have a lot of through traffic um, because of the commercial. So I'm hoping that we're gonna look into more urban um, bike paths. That's a whole other story. Um, but we really need to look into that and then as far as checks and balances, that these things don't get missed, like the um, big S-C-H-O-O-L. So we need to remind everyone that these are school zones and to slow down and speeding, and everyone will attest here is a big problem. Everyone's in a hurry to go nowhere, and the police say they're all, you know, it's COVID and people are cooped up and they're getting out, which is great, but it is that. And um, I do wanna personally thank Nancy for the city rec program, especially the skate park that's coming. This is gonna be awesome and totally rad. And I'm really excited for what the uh, future holds. I see that we're investing in our kids and the community. And let's once again, work on what we do have. Being a, a Southside historic homeowner, we really need to look at that and invest in that. And I uh, love my city vouchers. I painted my house this summer. So thank you for that brush up program that, you know, something that works for the city, that works for homeowners. And um, I just wanted to thank you all and keep us in mind. And that communication, it's gotta be clear. Maybe more social media, you know, we don't read the newspaper ads in the back, really. We, you know, we gotta get it social media or, tick, let's do TikToks, I don't know. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, I should say. My name is uh, Sandy Williams. I live at 3984 Brookstone Place, apartment two. And I, um, this I see every day because I'm there every day. I um, always think about the children of the community. Everyone wants to do this, do that, but I don't hear anyone talking about the children. We have a splash pad down the South Park, which is beautiful. Now, next to the splash pad, we gonna have a gas station. Ooh, gas station there, gas station down the street, gas station further, one down further, that's four within that area. I used to go to the splash pad every day with my grandson. I even had to make picnic baskets to stay down there all day because that's where he loves the water. Okay, COVID came, it was, it was hard, but he always wanted to go to the splash pad. Okay, now the splash pad is not working. It's on a timer. Every 45 minutes, the water will run. Then you had to sit there and you had to wait Kids couldn't play in the water because you, you had to wait almost another 45 minutes. It was called upon, yes, yes. You didn't give me that look, but I'm telling you what I know because I'm there. So he, after a while, we was able to, you know, he was like, well, Grandma, can we go up to the beach? Because the splash pad at the beach was working every day. Well, we right there at the water or either we would go to Marysville because it was on a continuous flow. You have all those apartments there for all those kids to come to the, and they got to sit there and wait for the water to come back on. 
that's ludicrous. They're not having fun. That was built for the kids to come out to play, to have fun in the summertime in the water. Well, when you get there, people go, oh, the water's not, no, child, you gotta wait 45 minutes to an hour for the water to come back on. That doesn't make sense. They say it's a park that they need to fix it. Well, summer's over with now. On my way here, that timer is still on. The water was running on my way here. Summer's gone, so why is it still running? When is it gonna get fixed? Children should not have to wait to have fun because they are children. They just wanna go out and play. As grown adults, we can, we can wait. We do a lot of that, we, yeah, we wait. But they shouldn't have to. South Park is a beautiful area. I was born in Fort Union Hospital, but I was born and raised right here in South Park. Everything comes from progress. Everything is going to change. And if we don't change it now, it's not going to get changed. As you said be once before, we have to work together. This is our city. This is our community. Let everybody be on the same page. Not this one on that one, this one on that one, the same page. And then we can get things done. I'm sorry your four minutes is up, but thank you. Thank you. Matt, Madam Mayor and Council, just point of reference, um, the mechanical, the computerized brain of the splash pad is broken. Um, we have not been able to source a new computer module for it. They are redesigning it to put a new module in it. Uh, so we have not, we still have not gotten the part. We have still not gotten the part, it's still back ordered. Uh, the short term solution is we installed an irrigation uh, timer and that's the only way we could get it to work, it was either that or nothing. But we are unable to source the supply um, and I have a, we're doing the best we can. It's out of order, but how long has it been? All summer we've been sourcing the supply, if not longer. Yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't waterproof, so it was failing. So we're, we're desperately working on it. Um, we're keenly aware of it, but like everything in COVID, they're back ordered and we're doing our best. Thank you for that. Is there anyone else wishing to address the city council tonight? Good evening, my name is Anthony Dupree. I live at 2708 South Boulevard in South Park. Um, what is said about South Park is absolutely correct. It is absolutely beautiful. It's safe, the water's right there. Um, Connor Street, um, it's a little background. I'm a meat cutter. I started cutting meat in 1985 in high school. And my dream was to open a meat shop on Connor Street. And so passing that over the years, and especially after River District uh, was blown up in 2013, I was on my way to work at Save-A-Lot, and I was waiting for someone to reinvest or do something in the South End, and nothing's ever happened. And I haven't heard about other investors coming in and being interested in the area, but part of the South Park is now designated as a green zone possibly for maybe medical marijuana or something, is that possible? I heard something about that because I looked into the Donut Shack property and I was told it was leased out and it was something possibly to do with it being a green zone. And then I, I don't know that for sure, but my whole point of getting up here is we do need people, as you said, from hometown to invest in our own town. And so I want to be those investors a lifetime goal for myself in my profession. And so I just want to know the information that I need to make that happen in our South End. So if I could get extra direction from city council members, I would greatly appreciate it. And um, 
Anthony's Meets and Eats is the idea. I would like you to be on Connor Street. <laughs> Is there anyone else wishing to address the City Council this evening? Seeing no one, I declare the public comment of the meeting closed. Can I address the homeless issue? City Manager would like to address one of the issues. Just want to update the Mayor and Council on what we are doing for the homeless issue as a serious population. Uh, serious issue we're trying to work with and get ahead of. We've worked with the Service City and Coordinated Body, which is all of the nonprofits in town to look at capacity to expand capacity for homeless uh, shelters and homeless and immediate housing. Um, the mayor and council have given originally $50,000 to the Blue Water Rescue Mission to expand capacity. Then during COVID, we gave the rescue mission additional 30,000 to install um, COVID safety measures for the population. There's a couple issues when the summertime, we have a, a lot of homeless population who won't choose shelters. They'll choose to go sleep in a bush. They'll go choose to sleep in the woods rather than come into a shelter. It's really in the winter months where they actually start seeking shelter. Another population we're really focused on is women and children who maybe a homeless shelter is an appropriate place for kids. So we're, we work with our rapid rehousing dollars, which is some federal funds we have, uh, working with Community Action Agency to find immediate housing for families who have shelter insecurity. That's a, a real significant issue. So you just can't mesh all the homeless population. So we are working with rapid rehousing dollars to find, to find uh, shelter for these families, women and children, who may, again, may not go well in a homeless shelter. We've expanded capacity to our two shelters. We've been implemented funding for COVID protections. And then the coordinating servicing body is doing an excellent job. So if you know someone who's homeless, call us, let us know where they're at. We'll get a caseworker out there to go interview them and talk to them uh, to find out what their immediate needs are. Sometimes they don't want help. Um, and sometimes they do want help and they just don't know how to, to, how to work through the system and we can provide case management for that. So it is a serious issue. Um, we've acknowledged it. Um, I think the steps that you guys have taken to invest, I think $80,000 in just the last year has been helpful. Um, more to come on that. Thank you. I would also like to respond uh, to the comments <coughs> regarding boards and commissions, just to let you know that it is just a formality that the city council has the option to schedule a public hearing. It does not necessarily mean that that will be done but it, it is a formality that we are required to allow that option. We will now move on to the consent agenda. Do I have an, a motion for the agenda? So move. Support. Council Member Ashford. Support. Council Member Lamb. The clerk will put, please take the roll. <clears throat> Council Member Ashford. Yes. Council Member Lamb. Yes. Council Member Mosierak. Yes. Council Member Pemberton. Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. I will read those items under the consent agenda. Confirming and approving single lot special assessments for fines, assessments, and or cost of removing blight, blighting factors, and or causes of blight, as well as the abatement of nuisances. Confirming the Mayor's Tax Increment Finance Authority appointment of Theo Kahoulis to fill a vacancy for a term to expire September 14, 2025 and the reappointment of Edward Brennan for a term to expire September 14, 2025. Approving the appointment of Theo Kahoulis to the Local Development Finance Authority to fill a vacancy due to the resignation of Jamie Kane, former superintendent of Portland Area School District, for a ter term to expire June 11, 2025. Approving the Zoning Board of Appeals appointment of Patrick McFarland to fill a vacancy with a term to expire July 1, 2024 and confirming the mayor's appointment of James Dewey to the Planning Commission for a term to expire August 11, 2024. We'll now move on to communications and petitions and the clerk will read the first item, please. Receive and file the August 3rd, 2021 election results for the initiatory petition submitted by Progress for Michigan 2020 to amend the marijuana facility and establishments ordinance as canvassed by the St. Clair County Board of Canvassers. Do I have a motion to receive and file this item? So moved. So moved. <laughs> Council Member Pemberton. So seconded by uh, Council Member Mosierak. <laughs> Council Member Pemberton can't speak, so he's whispering. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will take the roll. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. 
Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. We'll move on to boards and commissions. If the clerk would read the first item. Receive and file notification from the Planning Commission regarding their decision to deny the request for the special use permit for an automobile service station with a convenience store at the property, or at the property generally described as 1002 Lapeer Avenue. Council may choose not to accept the Planning Commission's recommendation and choose to schedule their own public hearing for September 27, 2021 to take action on this matter. Do we have a motion to receive and file this item? So moved and with okay. that I uh, accept the uh, Planning Commission's uh, recommendation. Councilmember Ashford, is there a second? Second. Councilmember Lamb, any discussion? Madam Mayor and Council, um, the applicant has chose not to appeal. Thank you. Any discussion from Council? The clerk will take the roll. Councilmember Mosierak? Yes. Councilmember Pemberton? Yes. Councilmember Ruiz? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Lamb? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Yes. We'll move to from the city manager. If the clerk would read the first item, please. Accepting the proposal from Conchera LLC in the amount of $127,292 for the purchase and installation of splash pad equipment at Gratiot Park with assistance from the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation and funding from the American Rescue Plan Act. Do we have a motion to adopt this item? So move. Support. Councilmember Mosierak and Councilmember Lamb. Uh, Any discussion? That was Councilmember Ash. Oh, she said it at the same oh, time. Oh, she yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, you can give it to her. Uh, with with oh, okay. Councilmember Mosierak. I didn't hear. No worries. Madam Mayor and Council, um, before you, you have the last component of the Ratchet Park design. In this photo, you will see, you will see the amazing universally accessed playground structure that you already approved um, with the poured uh, uh, Board underlayment, which will allow for children with all types of abilities to use that site. The last component is a splash pad that will be installed to the back side of that. So you have ADA accessibility, full splash pad. Um, this would not be possible without the amazing um, support of the uh, Ralph C. Wilson Foundation and also we'll be using some of our American Rescue Plan funding as well to create these outdoor healthy spaces where kids and families can gather uh, in safe outdoor spaces. It's gonna be an amazing project. It's gonna absolutely transform that park. So you'll have, that park is completed. Um, you have the new structure going in at Mansfield, uh, just down the street. You have Palmer literally across the street and Lighthouse Beach. So really a once in a generation transformation of that park. So will this somewhat complete all of the yes. our parks? Yes. Okay. Well, for, for Gratiot, yep, okay. for Gratiot, yep. Thank you, any further discussion? The clerk will take the roll. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. From the City Manager, number two, please. Accepting the bid from Trojan Development Company Incorporated in the amount of $249,000 for the rebuild of high lift service pumps one and three at the water filtration plant. Do we have a motion? So moved. Council Member Lamb, supported by Council Member Mojo. Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, Madam Mayor and Council, uh, by reconstructing these pumps, we're going to save about $92,000 as to going out and buying them new. So they're fully reconstructed and then we'll be able to reuse the valves and the core uh, to, to, to save us some money. So this is a uh, like about once in a 30 year project. Thank you. Any further discussion? The clerk will take the roll, please. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. From the City Manager, number three, please. Accepting the bid from Falcon Asphalt Repair Equipment in the amount of $24,273.32 for the purchase of a four-ton Falcon asphalt recycler and hot box trailer for use by the streets division in accordance with the state of Michigan My Deal Purchasing Program. Do we have a motion? So moved. 
Council Member Ashford, second. Support. Council Member Lamb. Any discussion? Madam yeah. Mayor, <laughs> <laughs> Madam Mayor and Council, this is a 2000. We're replacing a 2011 hot box. Um, what this will allow us to do is to fix the damn roads, uh, put the cold patch in. What it will also allow us to do is to mix, if we choose to, some uh, aggregate from, so if we mill a road, we can mix in a certain level of uh, reused aggregate to cut down on cold patch costs and recycle it. We'll have to twerk with that and figure out how to use it, tweak with that and figure out how to use it um, and, and make a good recipe up, but this will essentially allow our cold patching program to continue. So this is one piece of, one piece of equipment doing two Operational yep, it's a towable unit uh, that fires up with propane. We can heat the, 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 the patch up. But if we choose to, we could mix in some aggregate uh, to help recycle that as well. Oh, okay. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Council Member Mojrak. I'd just like to take a second and uh, tell the DPW what a great job they've done. I, think, I don't know if it was last month or the month before, James, you kind of updated us. They were going up starting their patching program. What a great job they did. There's a certain that ones that you go over and uh, they, they did a pretty perfect job. So I hope everybody recognizes that there were some healthy ones here for a bit. So thank you. Thank you. Mayor oh, excuse me, Council Member Ashford. Since Council Member Mitchell, uh, do, do they have a plan at which street they are? Uh, patching? Patching. Oh, I yes. mean, do we have the worst streets to Yep, we have a comprehensive pacer evaluation and a mapping oh, yeah, system we pacer. use. Yep, and we also have routes. Uh, so they've actually taken uh, the street sweeping routes and made those, those their crack sealing routes as well as their cold patching routes. Oh, okay. So there's kind of some synergies between the different operations now. Oh, okay. Is this PCP something that we have in place that we're using right now and we're replacing it? Yep, we will be replacing a 2011 model, which is getting old. Uh, okay. As you can imagine, they, they beat it. The, yeah, they beat it up. Still functional, just requiring a significant amount of maintenance. Any further discussion? The, Turk, the clerk will take the roll, please. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. We will now move on to resolutions. If the clerk would re read resolution number one, please. Authorizing 21 payments. Do we have a motion? So moved. Councilmember Mosrak, a second. Councilmember Lamb. Any discussion? Yes, um, I would like the city manager to respond to you know doing public um, public. Um, someone mentioned that uh, you know how we so much to Tetra Tech. Uh, can, can you just give us the, the yeah, absolutely. The uh, behind all that? Yep. Because I know other, I have been part of other communities where they're higher than what we are, but I think it's at some point the people need to understand what's going on here. Correct. So we've, two million sounds like a lot of money, but we've done literally tens and tens of millions of dollars of uh, infrastructure improvements throughout the city. Uh, wait, and we select a a consultant, we do what's called an RFQ, we request qualifications, uh, and then we request a proposal for cost. Um, Tetra Tech continuously be, t is continuously always one of the more cost competitive firms, but they have worked in our water and wastewater plant longer than any other firm, and there's a lot of institutional knowledge. So if you're paying an hourly rate and you hire a different firm that's never worked in your plant, a significant amount of billable time is them coming in to learn your system and to onboard them to understanding our system. So we diversify our consultants as much as possible. As you'll notice, uh, BMJ is doing a multi-million dollar project on Gratiot Avenue. That is not Tetra Tech. Um, so we do diversify where we can, but when it comes to some of this utility work, we find that it's more cost benefit to go with someone who knows the system, who understands the system, and that institutional knowledge is li allows them to make professional recommendations. Because when you're investing millions and millions of dollars into capital at the wastewater and water plant, you want someone who knows and understands your system, not a firm that just showed up and think they understand it, uh, don't understand the institutional knowledge, and may cost the taxpayers more money in the future. And I think, too, that you should mention, we all remember Flint, and that's something that you don't want to mess around with when you're talking about water, you know, the quality of your water and what you do in turn to protect it. So that is why I'm so strong or hell-bent on making sure that we have, you know, the proper people at the proper end doing the job for us to protect our citizens. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? The clerk will take the roll. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. 
Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. Resolution number two. Approving the agreement with the St. Clair County Community College to assign one police officer to serve as college resource officer on the St. Clair County Community College campuses for the 2021-22 college year. Is there a motion? So moved. Council Member Ashford? Second. Council Member Mosrak? Is there discussion? Madam Mayor and Council, there's no changes to this agreement. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You're doing a wonderful job. Um, Chief Platzer and his command staff have done an excellent job selecting an officer that's a, just a great fit. Uh, the last past current year, it's been Officer Smith, who's done just a tremendous job. I actually saw him on a golf cart buzzing around campus uh, <laughs> just the other day. Um, so I I'm, couldn't be more proud of the police department for this unique collaboration. Um, I couldn't be more proud of uh, Officer Smith for his willingness to engage in this and to do just a tremendous job. And it's been wonderful. So let's keep a good thing going. Any further discussion? Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Ruiz. It's just a, it's just a, a recommendation that we uh, we see that that continues because that connection between our schools at all level with our police force is just uh, it's tremendous. It pays off in many many ways. Absolutely. I, yeah, I think we had the opportunity to go over and do some training over there also. The council members, you know, with SC four, and then I think it. Um, brought about some other things in the future that we can think of being a little bit more collaborative in our uh, training efforts. So it's a good fit. Absolutely. One of the stated goals of Chief Platzer um, has been to hire local talent. Mm -hmm. and we see SC4 as a great feeder system right into our ranks. You can go to SC4, get a criminal justice degree. Mm -hmm. We'll send you to the academy. You can be a cadet and write tickets all summer and then get a nice career here as a Port Huron police officer. So. It's a good career pipeline for those who are interested. Yep. Grow your own. Any further discussion? The clerk will take the roll. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. Resolution number eight, please. Authorizing the purchase of 3111 John L. Portis Drive for $54,500. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Ashford? Second. Councilmember Mosierak? Madam Mayor and Council, this will be paid for the land purchase fund. There's a map on page 72 of your packet that shows that this is uh, congruent with all of our um, a a, a city property right now. We are also undergoing a $100,000 MEDC site readiness grant for that site, so you'll see a lot of work going on there. The contractor finally came back to work um, after threatening to pull his bid bonds, and he's back on the job. And uh, so it'll be, this is on par with what we paid for other parcels. Um, and this is an investment. When we sell this land, hopefully we get a nice factory or job creating uh, facility built there, and, and we'll get our money back. Any further discussion? The clerk will take the roll. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosierak? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. We will now move on to ordinances. If the clerk would read the first ordinance, please. An ordinance to amend Chapter 10 Building and Building Regulations of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances to provide for additions and revisions regarding, regarding blight violations, non-owner occupied residential dwellings and units, vacant and abandoned homes within the city of Port Huron. Do we have a motion for the first ordinance? So moved. Council Member Lamb, is there a second? Second. Council Member Mosierak, discussion? Madam Mayor and Council, we all, uh, held one-on-one -on -one briefings with the Mayor and Council to brief them on this. Um, now that this has been an entertaining to the first reading and is now a public document, David and I will begin setting up stakeholder meetings with different various groups, such as the Landlord Association, uh, to begin uh, going uh, through this process. Further discussion? No, I'd just like to thank Dave and, um, and James for bringing us in because you certainly made the case. Uh, I, I don't think numbers lie. The data uh, that was presented to all of us uh, it certainly did demonstrate that we did need to make some kind of a move uh, to uh, kind of rectify the way that we're 
proceeding in this uh, in our renters, you know, that that space, and it, it only had to be up to us. And I think uh, what we have here, number one, Dave, if you could just, um, you know, uh, just entertain us with, do you just have an overall theme as to what what we're what you're doing here, so so people understand? I mean, like I can say to you. Uh, like when I read this whole document, okay, I did because I wanted to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Uh, you want to kind of position yourselves to give you more room to actually more, more attention to our housing stock? Correct. Okay. Uh, Mayor Potom, and before you begin real quick, I just want to point out to the mayor and council, the entire planning department staff is here. So we have our administrative staff, our support staff, we have our inspectors, um, everyone who really does the heavy lifting down there. David and I just sip coffee. Uh, these folks are doing the heavy lifting. Uh, these, folks are, these folks actually run the planning department, so I wanna give them uh, uh, their time as well. So thank you for all your hard work you do. Um, when we did this, David did a lot of data gathering, a lot of data mining, speaking with the staff, learning from their boots on the ground experiences. Um, that's why they're all here as well tonight. So thank you for coming. Oh, okay. My, you know, I don't have to apologize because I just didn't know yeah. Tilly. He run his mouth about everything else. That he said. <laughs> so you know, thank you also for all that you know to make a difference. Because I know it wasn't a one man show. Because you know, when the buck stops, it's going. I'm gonna get him when it stops at him. So, so no, I didn't. Dave, just uh, give us you know a real overview. Happy to. Okay. Um, but you are correct. Uh, all the credit goes to uh, everybody in our team. Really, for, with their input, uh, this would be meaningless. Um, uh, to begin with, uh, really, this all started in 2013 with the police department and uh, and city council recognizing that the current way we address blight was not working. At that time, they were going through the municipal civil infraction process in district court, and unfortunately, that process is tedious. It's time consuming and going into a district court and going through that system, which can take uh, one year, two years, just to get some type of resolution. Um, they recognized that and brought before the council and the council approved that they shift to the administrative hearing bureau process, uh, which uh, is uh, a hearing process that is held within uh, these chambers. And it, it is an expedited, uh, way in which uh, ones who have violations can come in and uh, plead their case. Uh, we present our side, they present theirs, and an unbiased uh, person presides, and that makes the decision. Um, we really should give credit to the, uh, the founding of that process uh, with uh, Todd Shouty uh, being part of that, and uh, uh, we have uh, now the Assistant Chief Marcy Kewen. Um At that time, she was a lieutenant. Uh, we had Trudy Lewis, who was instrumental in, the, in bringing that forward. Uh, along with the inspectors at that time, uh, Pat Cogley, uh, we had Chris Peterson, George Sheridan, uh, Chuck May. Uh, just did a wonderful job in getting this system working. Um, I was fortunate enough to have that handed off to me in 2018. Uh, we started with uh, uh, a new crew as time went on and once retired. We're very fortunate now, our uh, code enforcement group now entails uh, three chiefs of town. Uh, we have Don Egypt and Greg Hoppy uh, as part of that process. Uh, so we continue to have a fantastic group. And along with that, we have the input as we go forward and what we're proposing uh, tonight is uh, 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 the ones within our building department that would be uh, uh, Mr. Shagney and uh, Keisha Evans. Uh, they represent our uh, building department. We have our rental division uh, with us. We have Christopher Leckie and Paul Kalecki, and we also have Michelle Johnston here as well. Um, we'll also be shifting to the uh, zoning as, uh, as far as enforcement. Uh, from the zoning, we have Jordan Boisard, uh, we have uh, also Tim uh, Herrick. 
Tim is brand new to our department. Um, and then we uh, have co- Tim's the guy that makes all of our fancy maps yeah. that we've been appreciating. Oh. That's the guy. <laughs> yeah. And then we have uh, our community development, which interacts with all departments, especially on the blight side, offering paint vouchers and assistance. And that would be uh, Katie Bo Posey and uh, Zoe Russell. So without their input and giving us guidance and direction in what needs we have uh, with the various divisions, um, this document wouldn't have been able to be prepared. Um, and I have special thanks to Jordan and to Katie and Nicole Kira, who really kind of did the, uh, the heavy lift on, on looking at a dozen different ordinances. And we you know, looked at Warren, Kalamazoo, Ypsilanti. Um, had special thanks to uh, Shane uh, Laporte from uh, the city of Jackson, who was my counterpart and his advice because they've been using this system across all divisions for 15 years and uh, really appreciated his input um, as we went forward. And also with what you have in front of us, sitting down with Al Francis and again, Todd Shouty and uh, giving us direction. So a review of the changes of what we're proposing and uh, in this particular, we're looking at chapter 10 um, we're looking at changing uh, basically how we define uh, the rental property. Uh, we're proposing that we look at it instead as a non-owner occupied and having a broader definition in that it really does encompass um, properties, not only that are rentals, but there's also family member occupieds that potentially are rental property. We have close to 500 to 600 properties in which they're not registered but yet they're not owner occupied. So we really don't know where do they fit. They could be snowbirds, uh, they, they could be just you know, partially used. We really don't know. This, this will start to give us the tool set to understand what those true numbers look like. And then how do we address that as far as uh, you know, uh, inspections and ensuring uh, that the properties are uh, being taken care of. By the way, those pieces were in place in the original document uh, that was formed for the rental process back in 1994. And there might be somebody on this uh, mm -hmm. panel that uh, was from 1994 that was part of that process. Right. The other issue that we're going to be addressing is the appeals. We're gonna be shifting it from the Rental Appeals, appeals Board, which is a kind of a civilian board that uh, hears uh, uh, any grievances. Well, the system we use now for inspection is based on the International Property Maintenance Code, which is a building code. And unfortunately, they're not familiar with building codes. So you're basically putting them at a disadvantage to hear issues arising from building codes. So we're gonna place it back to where it originally was in 1994, mm -hmm. is back into the uh, Building Board of Appeals. And that'll be the Construction Board of Appeals. So we're kind of actually revisiting some old ground. And uh, the same with, uh, we're gonna be requesting that they uh, present a, uh, a, pl a placard or a certificate in a, uh, in a frame in which a resident or a tenant can see that their unit is currently certified, that it is part of the process and it is registered. Uh, much like you do if you go into an auto repair and making sure that they actually are licensed to do what they do. So that it actually is, again, revisiting some language that we saw back in 1994. So just a couple of areas, uh, uh, again, for the, on the rental side, not huge changes. I think, uh, as Mr. Bordeis mentioned, uh, if, if he didn't recognize any large monumental shifts, we're just broadening our scope to include areas that otherwise we have great difficulty in managing. Uh, just when we have uh, Michelle, who is, uh, the, the lone person on our, our clerical staff who manages upwards of 6,000 rental properties on top of the properties that she are. Uh, we don't know what they are. Uh, those are those 500 properties. And then we have about 230 properties that are family member that we don't know, you know, uh, whether or not it is truly family member. Is it family member for two months and then it shifts? This will begin the process of understanding what that looks like. The second piece that we're uh, looking at on chapter 10 is we're going to be adding the uh, 
new ordinance of tracking uh, vacant homes and registering vacant and abandoned homes. Uh, this is something that is used, again, throughout uh, uh, the state of Michigan. We looked at a number of communities, and we actually looked at Jackson as a great model of doing it, and we used their language as well. Um, this will create a monitoring system where quarterly we will visit and, uh, and make sure the condition of these vacant homes that are roughly about 280, and that fluctuates all the time. But that would allow us then to make sure that people are not trying to break into the back. Uh, are windows being broken? Um, are they creating a nuisance? And uh, are we seeing squatters or people going in and scrapping? All of this will give us a system in which we can monitor those issues. In fact, in your single lot assessments today, the two highest fines that you saw were properties that have been vacant for seven years and the other has been vacant for two years. And we have boredoms, broken windows, uh, issues of, uh, uh, deferred maintenance that they're just not following through with. So this will give us the mechanisms to make sure that we can monitor uh, the neighborhoods. So we're going to be proposing in the coming year um, a fee structure for that monitoring. Uh, we've seen an average of, of 600. It ranges up to 1,000 in some communities. We'll leave it at the discretion of council to uh, decide what that might look like. But again, we want something that allows us to uh, monitor the properties and also to encourage those who have vacant properties to put them back into use. Uh, we don't want to see properties sitting for 10, 14 years uh, without being uh, basically contributing to the neighborhood and in fact more likely becoming a detriment. So if I, you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. No, uh, you know, I think you, you answer mine, but I, I, I agree with uh, Mike Bodice, you know, there's nothing huge, but what it is is a win for not only uh, his organization or whatever, for us as a city and also the, the, the people that are out there renting. I think this whole thing kind of speaks to that. And all with all the work that you've done, it gave you teeth, you know, and what you can see to manage it effectively instead of just having something on paper and turning the wheels because people drive down through the streets of Port Henry, we see these old broke down houses and, you know, well, what's going on? Why can't we look like other communities? You know, there's certain pockets that look a whole mess, you know, and, 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 and it's not that our inspectors are not doing our jobs. By the way, do we have enough inspectors? We can always use more. Oh, <laughs> okay. But, you know, you, you need to give people the right tools and equipment to do the job if you're going to do the job. You know, you don't give them try to do something with where they, you know, totally just, you know, it's not every, I, I think everything is possible, but it just comes impossible when you're overstressed trying to get stuff that you know could look a lot better than that. And so we don't owe anybody anything, but certainly as a city council, we're here to look out for the welfare of the people that are living here. And, and you heard it tonight where everybody want our town to look like this and that. Well, there's a price to pay for that. You know, you gotta meet us halfway and trying to make this city a better city in the way we have, and that means our housing stock. And we're very serious about this. And I know it's kind of mundane for you to get up here, you know, and go through all this, you know, but it's important, and that's what we do. We need to do this. We gotta get to the point. That's why we're elected. So thank you for what you're doing, and thank you all for what you're doing. Any other questions for David while he's at the podium? Any further discussion? The clerk will take the roll, please. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mojarek? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. The clerk will read ordinance number two, please. An ordinance to amend chapter two administration, article seven, administrative hearings bureau, section 2-901 definitions of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances to designate certain violations as blight, making them subject to the city's Administrative Hearings Bureau process. Do we have a motion to give this ordinance its first reading? So moved. Councilmember Lamb? Support. Councilmember Mojarak? Any discussion? You know, I'll pick, 
Go ahead. Sorry. I just speak Councilman for Rashford. the rest of it. You know, I just speak for the rest of it because all the ones that are following this help complement what we just did in terms of the building. So I won't have no more questions because they all, you can't work with one, not unless you work with all three. That's it. Thank you. Clerk, take the roll, please. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Council Member Mosrek? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. Ordinance number three, please. An ordinance to amend chapter 52 zoning, article two, administration and enforcement, and article three, district regulations of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances to designate certain violations as blight, making them subject to the city's administrative hearings bureau process. Do we have a motion to give this ordinance its first reading? So moved. Councilmember Mojarak. Support. Councilmember Lamb. Any discussion? Clerk will take the roll. Councilmember Lamb? Yes. Councilmember Mojarak? Yes. Councilmember Pemberton? Yes. Councilmember Ruiz? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. Ordinance number four, please. An ordinance to amend Chapter 32, Law Enforcement, Article 2, Municipal Civil Infractions of the Port Huron Code of Ordinances for the purpose of revising certain ordinance violations as municipal civil infractions. Do we have a motion to give this ordinance its first reading? So moved. Support. Council Member Mojarak, support by Council Member Ruiz. Any discussion? The clerk will take the roll, please. Council Member Mosrak? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Ruiz? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Lamb? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald? Yes. This concludes the business of our regular meeting. Does anyone have an, on council have anything they'd like to bring forward or mention? No, none other than um, I would like to mention all those um, that are possibly uh, looking at us tonight. Uh, to thank you all for all your support and help with the Tuskegee Airmen Memorial that we did on uh, Sunday, I mean, Saturday before last. Uh, all our visitors, I mean, they just commented on the reception that they got from the people here in the city of Port Huron and vowing that they will be back. So just thank you from the heart for all what you did because it's certainly been a very deserving uh, time for not just uh, us as a black people or African Americans, but for all people uh, across the United States and went all over the world, that uh, celebration down there. We got emails from just everybody. So just thank you so much. And we know you were already on the map. We shown up on the map now. So, so go for it here on. So thank you very much, uh, Sherry. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, yes, Mayor Pro Tem. Council Member Lamb. I'd just like to uh, extend a thank you for our local artists that spent last weekend, Saturday and Sunday, painting the murals um, on our uh, military street tunnel. And if you have not been down there to see it, it I suggest that you take a few minutes out of your day and just take a nice walk. It's quiet, it, it's beautiful, and uh, they spent two full days painting, and they're amazing. Thank you, anything else? Just like to thank the volunteers for the antique boat show. Huge success this past weekend. Thank uh, all the ton of volunteers. I saw, I saw Anita putting life jackets on kids and putting them in boats. I saw, <laughs> I saw Pro Tem Archibald grilling brats and hot dogs. And I mean, everyone was all hands on deck, and it was just a great, lovely time to showcase our city. Wild summer here for a yeah. while. Jeez, <laughs> I mean, we, had a, we had a break. We didn't get a break. I mean, <laughs> which was a good thing, but. Uh, I would also like to add a thank you to all of those involved in the Tuskegee Airmen, as well as the 9-11 ceremony and the boat show. Uh, all of them were fabulously done. Uh, we appreciate all the hard work everyone put into doing all three of those events. And then I would be remiss if I didn't switch my hat real quick and mention that uh, we kicked off Community Roof Set for Kids yesterday with the St. Clair County Child Abuse and Neglect Council, Matt Markin with uh, D Q Country 107 went up on the roof at four o'clock where he will stay until Friday night at six. But uh, we had a lot of uh, people calling and questioning and worried about him when there was so much lightning. 
And yes, we did take him down and put him in the stairwell <laughs> until the lightning <laughs> passed before we put him back up on the roof. It was the first time anyone's ever had to leave the roof and go off air, but we did have to do that for his safety. Uh, but we, we would love for uh, everyone to come out and say hello and um, you know, wave up to Matt and thank you for that. Anything else? Do I have an emotion to adjourn? So move, Madam Chair. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>